Hi, so this thing is a Frenet heater. It's a friction heater. It works by um, a drum rotating inside of this with a uh, close basing, three millimeters from the outer drum. It's filled with the heavy oil and the two surfaces passing over each other heat up the oil. Now, this isn't a particularly good design. It's just what I had lying around, so I've been wanting to do this for absolutely ages. I thought I'd give it a go with the bits that I have. I won't be taking it very high because we've got uh, polycarb plates at the end there. There should be steel plates when I get some real temperature out of it. But it's still um, not a bad little model for me giving it a bit of a go, which is really all I want to do. Now, it's not the best design. Um, better designs is a guy called Oil Piggy, where he does interlacing discs. And it's also better if it's short but um, broad rather than long and thin, and you get uh, much more efficiency out of it. But, you know, as I say, this is what I had lying around, and the same principles, principles apply whether it's short and broad or long and thin. And the rest of the video really is going to be about how to make this, or rather how I went around making it. Then at the end of the video, what we're going to do is uh, spin it up and see what we get out of it. So let's get on with making this. Hi. Now I'm quite interested in something called Frenet heaters. Now Frenet heaters are resistance heaters. They basically work by rotating one drum inside another. You put a layer of oil in there and the friction heats the oil up and you get quite a lot of heat out of it, apparently. I've always wanted to make one, and as it happens, I have two bits of pipe lying around where if we slot one in the other, we've got about our eighth of an inch or three millimetres clearance. So it makes sense to try, well, sense, it makes sense to try and make a Frenet heater out of these two bits of pipe. So that's the plan. Now you get lots of variations on Frenet. The simplest one is the two bits of drum or two pipe. Uh, you can get more complicated ones where you get layers of discs all interlacing with each other. But we're basically going to make up a simple one like this. Now the basic Frenet, look, Frenet looks like this. Now the basic Frenet looks like this. You have an outer drum and you have an inner drum. You spin the amp in a drum and this oil here heats up. Now, if you do it in a simple form like this, then it solves a lot of problems, but equally it creates a whole set of other problems. The first one is you need a, a central drum, because you're going to spin it quite fast, it needs to be relatively central. Uh, you don't want the axle to poke through, so you don't have ceiling problems at the bottom here. So we want some kind of bearing there that will take the thrust and help it spin, some kind of retainer here with a bearing in it, and some kind of drum where it's centred, and that's what we're going to make. So to make the inner drum, I'm going to use the smaller bit of pipe and a bit of this stuff, and all I've done really is use this with a hole cutter, cut out a load of these discs from the perspex, these are four millimetres thick, and then I've put them on the lathe and turned them down in the way that you see me on other videos. And what I've got are two discs like this, where we've got an inner disc that's slightly small, an outer disc that's slightly big, and they fit almost exactly on that drum. And the pleasure of those, if they've been uh, lathe turned, so we've got a dead centre, got it fitting very tightly, so we're going to be pretty sure that that is going to rotate all by itself. And we've also got a nice little hole all the way through that's going to be centred. So because we've got a hole all the way through that's nicely centred, we can use a bit of rod. This is um, six millimetres thick. It's only six millimetres thick because that's the bit of rod I had. So you feed a bit of rod through, And there you go, you've got a drum, the one we tighten those nuts down, that's going to be able to spin on its centre axis. So I've glued that on with a bit of ABS glue and that just makes sure that the whole thing's sealed up. Now, when I rotate it, it's going to be sitting up right like that and it's going to want to rotate around there. So I'm going to use these, which are skate bearings. So the thing will sit in there and spin on the skate bearing. Now, obviously I'm going to have a problem with that. The problem I'm going to have is the thrust on it. So you could use a dome nut like this, a 6mm dome nut, and it will rest just in there and spin on the inner race, but not on the outer race. Now, I've done something slightly different. I took a nut and I've turned it down so that we've got a little bevel on it and that it's 8mm. So that nut will fit nicely into there, but right on the rest of that bearing. It's not ideal for it, but it'll make a little bearing for me. Now, what I can do then is I put a nut on the top here. I can take my adjusted nut and put it on the bottom there. And then what I get is a little fitting that will fit nicely in there. And then when I fit that whole thing together, that's going to spin quite nicely on that bearing. The outer case, which I'm going to use this, I need to do something very similar. So again, I've cut a couple of um, plastic pieces out of there that just fit inside and give me a nice centre 
a nice fit in there. And the plan is to glue them onto some flat pieces, drill some holes in here, through bolt it with some 8mm bar, then drill that out to 22mm so that that will drop in there. Now, they're 4mm and that's about 8mm, so one disc isn't actually enough. What I need to do is cut another disc. But I don't need to cut the disc particularly large, I just need to cut it so it will hold that 22mm um, race bearing in place. So that's what I'm going to do. Okay, there we go, one large, one small, and we're going to glue that together and drill that out for the 22mm. Now, I cleaned these up by putting them in the lathe, but you don't have to do that, you could just put them in a drill. And if you put them in a drill, spin them and hold a trimming knife blade to them, as I say, like I do on other videos, and you'll be able to do that quite easily. And you just put a bit of crazy glue on it, and then put one on top of the other. Now, in case you're worried about it lining up, you can put a 6mm nut in the, um, bolt in there, and that will line them up nicely and glue them together so that you can be sure that they're lined up. And I'm going to do that with the other. So these two base plates, this is about 97 millimetres broad, so I've made those at 130. And I marked up the first one to the centres by drawing diagonal lines, and a centimetre and a half in, I've drilled out my 8 millimetre holes. But I only drilled them through the one plate, because then what I did was take the two plates together, and now I'll drill the holes through. And that'll keep everything in registration with each other. When I take it to pieces and put the bolts through, they'll be in line. Um, the one thing I need to remember is put a notch in here, like a saw mark, so it tells you how to line everything up once you've drilled it out. Because once you've drilled it out, if you don't do that, you'll spend an awful lot of time flipping the plates over and rotating them, trying to get them to line up. And when you're ready, just drill through. Okay, so we're going to divide this into the top plate and bottom plate, and that's going to be the top plate. Now, if you've got the centre line on there, you can actually line that up quite nicely. And if you line that up quite nicely and glue it on, that will be the first one we drill through, and that will be the top plate. Once you've glued up your top plate and marked out the centre, you can drill it out with your 22mm bit. bit. Now, the top plate goes all the way through. And when you've drilled that one through, you can drill your bottom plate through. Now, you'll notice the bottom plate has been drilled through before it's been attached to its actual base plate, because you don't want to drill through there because we'll want that oil tight. Now, when you drill that through, you'll find that the bearings are actually quite a tight fit. So you're going to need to ease them in there, perhaps with the hammer and a block of wood, or put it in a vise and just close the vise up, and that will slide the bearing in. And there it is with the bearing in place. Now, I've flipped everything over because obviously it's a mirror image, and I've lined everything up. And what I'm going to do now is glue that on there. Now, I'm gluing that on there so that I can, in this way, so that I can make sure that those lines are all lined up with the holes. So take a few moments just to make sure that everything is nicely lined. Put a bit of glue on here. And then glue it down. So once we've made its base plates, that being the top plate goes all the way through and the bottom plate nicely blanked off. We're almost there. There's only one more thing to remember. I used a bit of 6mm rod for my centre drum. If you used an 8mm rod, you don't need to worry about this bit. But I used a 6mm. And that's an 8mm hole. So what I need to do is cut a little bit of spacer, which is 8mm on the outside and 6mm on the inside. And I happen to have a bit of aluminium rod that fits quite nicely in there. So all I do is drift that in with a block of wooden hammer or a vice, and that will make the centre hole 6mm to take my 6mm rod. Again, you don't really need to bother if you actually used a bit of 8mm. Okay, so nearly finished. What I've done is I've taken some 8mm bar and cut them off, put some donuts on the bottom because I think they look pretty, fed them through the holes that I drilled in the base plate, and I put the outer piece of steel onto the base plate. You'll see this white. I can be a bit anal about these things and I worry about it leaking, so that's just silicon sealant. I've gone round with the fire resistive silicon sealant and dropped that pipe on top, so when I screw it down, it's going to make a good seal. Now, I'm not too sure whether this thing will leak from the top or not, but I'm going to give it a go. So what I've done is taken a little piece of rubber, I happen to have some rubber sheets, and I've cut a circle out of it, and that circle is going to act as a seal on the top of it. So all I have to do now is take my top plate and feed it on. So once I put the top plate on and bolted these donuts down, that's the build finished. Now, I haven't tightened it down fully yet, because obviously what I need to do is put some oil in, and you fill it to about there with oil. So I'll fill it with some oil, bolt it down, and let's give it a spin. So there you go, that's how you make it. Now, I've got it uh, lined up and um, with a drill. I'm just going to run it off a hand drill, which turns it at uh, 2,800 RPM. It's got a 100 millilitres of this stuff in it, which is Magnatec um, 10W40 oil. I've got a thermocouple on here, and it's reading the temperature there at 13. And I'm going to start it, and when I start it, I'm going to start the stopwatch, 
We'll see what kind of temperature you can get up to and how quickly you can get up to it. So let's connect the drill up. So having connected the drill, we'll start the stopwatch and turn it over. Well, I've been at this for about four minutes and it's raised it from um, 12 degrees, 13 degrees to 28 degrees. That's kind of cool. It certainly works. Hmm. Well, that's 33 degrees. So it uh, feels warm to the touch. It took about six minutes to get it there. So it's not particularly efficient, the little thing that I made. So um, I think I'm going to remake that using the discs because I found that really interesting, actually. I hope you did too, and thank you very much for watching.